video to give you some notes to help you um, study for taking your chapter 4 test in statistics. So this says, if two surge protectors are arranged in series, that means that in order for <clears throat> them to fail, they would both have to fail. So what's the probability that a voltage surge will not damage it? So it will not damage it if they don't both fail. So the probability that they don't both fail is equal to the pro is equal to the complement that they do fail, which is one minus the probability that they both fail, which equals one minus. Okay, well the probability of working correctly is ninety one percent, or point ninety one. The probability that one of them fails is therefore equal to zero point zero nine, which would be nine percent. Whoops. So the probability that they don't both fail is equal to 1 minus the probability that they both fail, which is 1 minus the probability that they fail times the probability that they fail, which is equal to 1 minus 0 0.09 times 0 0.09, which equals 0.9919, which rounds off to 0.992. Actually, it says don't round, 0.9919. So that's 0 0.9919, 0 0.9919, 0 0.9919. And then it says if they're arranged in parallel, what's the probability that a voltage surge will not damage the television? Well, if they're arranged in parallel, that means that if either one of them fails, that then the television will be damaged. So the probability that it's not damaged equals the probability that both of them stay good. Because in order for it not to be damaged, they both have to stay good. Good and good. Well, the probability that it stays good is 0 0.91. So that's equal to 0 0.91 times 0 0.91, which is equal to... 0 0.91 squared, which is 0 0.8281. 0 0.8281. 0 0.8281. 0 0.8281. So obviously, when they're arranged in series, that's better protection because the probability that the television is not damaged is more than 99%, and that's better. So the series arrangement provides better protection because it has a higher probability of protection. Find the probability that when a couple has five children, at least one of them is a boy. So the probability of at least one boy is equal to the complement of the probability that they're all, all girls. So that'd be 1 minus the probability of all girls, which is equal to 1 minus the probability that you have 5 girls, since there's 5 girls total. So it'd be the probability of a girl is 0.5, and you raise that to the power of 5. So let's do that on the calculator real quick. So 1 minus 0 0.5 to the power of 5. That's equal to that. Oh, and it says simplify, do not round. So let's actually do this as a fraction. So one minus one half to the power of five. Well, one half to the power of five is equal to 1 to the power of 5 is 1, 2 to the power of 5 is 32, and 1 minus 1 over 32 is equal to 32 over 32 minus 1 over 32, which is equal to 31 over 32. 
So the probability is 31 over 32 that at least one of the five children is a boy. Okay, so they're randomly choosing four digits with replacement. Find the probability that for one such phone number, the last four digits include a zero, at least one zero. So the probability of at least one zero is equal to the complement of the probability that there are no zeros, right? And the probability that there are no zeros means that you have a non-zero digit four times in a row. Well, there are nine non-zero digits, so the probability that it's not zero is 0.9. And you raise that to the power of four, four because there are four of them. So if you have a four, four digits randomly selected with replacement, the probability that there is at least one zero in them is one minus the probability of no zeros, which is one minus 0.9 to the power of four. And that equals 1 minus 0.9 to the power of 4 equals 0.3439. And that rounds off to 0 0.344. 0 0.344. Okay, so this is a problem about giving somebody the same amount of money but giving them quarters or giving them a one dollar bill. Find the probability of selecting a student who spent the money given that they were given four quarters. Well the probability that they spent the money probability that they spent the money given that they got quarters is equal to the number of people who spent the money and got quarters, which is 30, divided by, whoops, divided by the number of people who were given four quarters. So the people who are given four quarters is 30 plus 17, which is 47. So 47. So the probability that, that somebody spent the money given that they were given four quarters is the number of people who spent the money and were given quarters which is 30 divided by the number of people who are given quarters which is 47 so 30 divided by 47 equals point six three eight point six three eight Point six three eight, and then the probability of randomly selecting a student who spent the money, given that they were given a dollar bill. So, what's the probability that they spent the money, given that they received a dollar bill? So that's by definition equal to the probability, or in this case, we can just use the quantity, the number of people who spent the money and were given a one dollar bill which is 13 people divided by the number of people who were given a one dollar bill and that is 13 people plus 35 people which is 48 people so 13 people spent it and were given a one dollar bill and 48 people total were given a one dollar bill so the probability that they spent it given that is equal to 13 divided by 48, which is 0 0.271, if you round it off, 0 0.271. So that means that if you were given quarters, even though it's the same amount of money given to the student, if they were given quarters, they had a much higher chance, much higher probability of spending the money that they were given. So a student given four quarters is more likely to have spent the money.
Okay, so this says find the probability of getting someone who tests positive. Test positive, right? Given that he or she did not have disease. So this actually is very relevant to the situation that's going on right now. Okay, so it is possible to test positive for disease and not actually have the disease. Okay, let's see. The probability in this case, now of course the, these numbers don't have anything to do with, with any diseases right now. So this is not relevant in that way. The probability is approximately, okay, so the, prob the conditional probability that of testing positive given that you don't have the disease is equal to uh, the number who were positive and did not have the disease on top. So that would be tested positive and did not have a disease. That's 20 people total. 20 people tested positive and did not have the disease. So that'd be 20 divided by the total number of people who did not have the disease. So that would be actually not having the disease is 20 plus 133. So that's 153. So the probability would work out to be 20 divided by 153 equals point one three one point one three one. Find the positive predictive value for the test. That means find the probability that the subject lied, find the probability that the subject lied, given that the test yields a positive result. Okay, so the probability would be equal to the number of people who lied and received a positive result. So, did the subject actually lie? Yes, and positive test result, yes. So 42, it's 42 people who lied, actually, and had a positive result, divided by, okay, then negative test result. Okay, so then divided by the total number of people who had positive test results. The total number of people who had positive test results is 17 plus 42, which is 59. So 42 divided by 59, and that equals 42 divided by 59 equals 0 0.711, which rounds up to 0 0.712, 0 0.712. In horse racing, a trifecta is a bet that the first three finishers in a race are selected and they are selected in the correct order. Does it involve combinations or permutations? So combinations involve selecting a group of things without respect to the order. Permutations means selecting something where the order does matter. And the order does matter, but they have to be selected in the correct order. So this would be because the order of the first three finishers does make a difference. The trifecta involves permutations. Because the order of the first three finishers does make a difference, the trifecta involves permutations. So the next one says, Thief steals an ATM card and must randomly guess the correct four-digit PIN code from a six-key keypad. Repetition of digits is allowed.
what is the probability of a correct guess on the first try? So it's kind of a strange situation. This is a tricky problem. Because normally we have 10 digits, 0 through 9, but this keypad only has 6 keys. So the probability of getting a correct, um, I mean, sorry, the number of possible codes, they have 6 codes they can tap at first because there are 6 keys on the keypad. And they can use the same digit again. So they, have, they can use 6 on the second one, 6 more, and 6 more. So the number of possible codes is 6 to the power of 4. Because there's six keys on the keypad, and six times six times six times six is six to the power of four. So there's 1,296 possible codes. One two thousand one two nine six. The probability the the code is correct on the first try is therefore one out of one two nine six. Okay, a presidential candidate plans to begin her campaign by visiting the capitals in three of 41 states. What's the probability she, that she selects the route of three specific capitals? So, in this case, order does matter. So, she has 41 states to choose from at first. Then she's going to visit a different state. She has 40 other choices to make she can choose next because she won't visit the same state again, at least not in this in this route. And then she has 39 other possible states to choose from. So the answer to this, okay, sorry, this is not the answer. This is the number of possible routes that she can choose. So Um, let me just multiply that together real quick. 41 times 40 times 39. 41 times 40 times 39. 41 times 40 times 39. So that's 63960. 63960. Whoops, sorry. I'm just trying to copy the answer. Okay, so now that means the probability that she selects a certain exact route is 1 out of 63960. All right, winning the jackpot in a particular lottery requires that you select the, five, the correct five numbers between 1 and 35. So the, that means that selecting five numbers between 1 and 35, that's permutations. You're just, the order doesn't matter. You just have to have 35 things, you're choosing 5 numbers from them, and that's equal to, the, the number of ways, the number of possible choices of 5 numbers you can choose is 324,632. But then in a separate drawing, you must also select, correct, select the correct single number between 1 and 27. This makes it even harder to win. So you multiply that by 27. So the number of ways of, of the number of possible results is more than 8,765,000. It's terrible. I'm going to copy that number. The probability of winning the jackpot, therefore, is only one out of that much. So 35, choose 5, getting those five numbers correct, and then choosing one of 27 possible choices for your another number, and then that's the final result. Okay, so this is an, a tip from me. How many ways can the letters in happiness be arranged? This is an example. Total number of letters, factorial, divided by the product of factorials of each number repeated, of each repeated letter. For example, in, mis in the word mm, um, happiness, there's two repeated P's and two repeated I's and two repeated S's. No, there's not two repeated I's. There's just two repeated P's and two repeated S's. So the result would be 9 factorial divided by 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So the number of ways that the letters in the word Mississippi can be arranged, first count the letters. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So the numerator will be 11 factorial. And then, are there any duplicate letter M's? No. How many, how about letter I's? There's four I's. So four factorial goes in the bottom because of the four I's. Then S's. There's also four S's, so four factorial goes in the bottom again. How about P's? There's two repeated letter P's, so that means a two factorial goes in the bottom. That's all the repeated letters. So the number of different ways the letter words and the the letters of Mississippi can be arranged is equal to this. So I'll calculate that. Eleven factorial divided by four factorial times four factorial times two factorial. And that is equal to that. So the number of ways they can be arranged is equal to 34,650. A student wants to simulate 39 birthdays but they don't have a calculator or software available, so the student makes up 39 numbers between 1 and 365. Is it okay to do it this way? Why or why not? Choose the correct answer. Well, pretty much tons of research has been done that indicates that when humans try to choose random numbers, even the act of trying to make it seem random or just guess different things actually makes it not random. For example, it's less likely for people to pick the number one, for example, because that doesn't seem very random. Um, okay, so the answer would be no, of course. It's not okay. And it's not true that simulations must be performed with a calculator or a statistical program. So answer A is wrong. Because you can do things like um, randomly toss dice or flip a coin or things like that. Things like that are also random. So you don't have to use a calculator or a program to, to do simulations. The reason that it's bad to do simulations by making them up in your head is because people generally favor some numbers over others. So the answer is no, it's not okay to do it because people generally favor some numbers over others. So they don't select numbers with a process that's truly random. Now the truth is, even software programs don't actually use a truly random process. But it's more random than humans, though. How could you use a random digit generator or a random number table to simulate rain if you knew the 30% of the time with conditions as you have today it will rain? So you need to do this. You need to let three digits, which represents 30%, three digits represent rain. And then all the other ones represent no rain. Except you can't use 10 because 10 is not a digit. So you can't answer number A. So instead, how about number B? So in number B, it says let those three digits, 0, 1, and 2, represent rain. That's three chances. And then let the other digits, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, represent no rain. So there's 60% six, chance of no rain because there's six digits that represent no rain. I mean, sorry, seven digits. There's a 70% chance of no rain, because there's seven digits that represent no rain, and there's three digits that represent rain, so that's exactly representing 30% chance of rain and 70% chance of no rain. And then you generate random digits, and then any time you get a 0, 1, or 2, you write down rain in your simulation. So that would be the best option. Okay, then the last question on the test says, use a simulation approach to find the probability when five consecutive babies are born, there's one of at least three babies that are the same. So let's see, male and female. So these are random numbers where zero represents a male and one represents a female. And you're doing a simulation of five consecutive babies being born. And then you're checking to see if there's ever at least three babies in a row that are the same. Okay, so in simulation number one, there are not three in a row that are the same. 
In simulation two, there are not. In simulation three, there are not. In simulation four, there are. So I'm going to write down a little mark on my paper. That's one time. I just hold, my, hold up my finger. That's one time that there are at least three in a row. And then this in simulation five, there's also three in a row. So that's two times. I'm going to hold up two fingers. In simulation six, there's also three in a row. That's so I'm going to hold up a third finger. In simulation seven, there's also three in a row. So I'll hold up four fingers. In simulation eight, there's also three in a row. So I'll hold up five fingers. And then in simulation nine, there's not three in a row. In simulation ten, there's not three in a row. So there's five times that at least three in a row were born that were the same. So are runs of at least three babies in a row um, unusual? Well, based on the simulations, such an event is not unusual, right? So based on the simulation, such an event is not unusual because its probability is, well, there's five times it happened out of 10. What's five divided by 10? It's equal to 0.5, right? So based on the simulation, such an event is not unusual. And the definition for being unusual in this problem is given that anything greater than 0 .05, 0 0.05 is considered to be not unusual. And that's a general rule in statistics in many, many other problems as well. It's not always, but in many, many problems. Something that has a chance more than 5% is considered to be not unusual. Like, for example, if you go to Panera and eat um, once in a while, more than 5% of the time, then that's not unusual for you. Okay, so based on the simulations, such an event is not unusual because its probability is 0.5, which is greater than 5% of 0.05. So that would be the answer. All right, well, let's submit. All right, those are the end of my notes for you, and very best wishes to you. Keep up your great work.